Darius. Here we go. This is your guys' general rela general relationship read. So, before we get into the details of the read, let's pray. Great Creator, Father God, Divine Mother, Mother Mary, angels, ancestors, and spirit guides, I just pray and ask for wisdom and clarity for any messages that come through for the collective sign of Sagittarius for this, their general relationship read. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, there's, there's a timestamp on this read. Whenever you're led to this message is the exact timing that you need to hear it. And we'll start out with shamanic medicine, oracle cards, and we'll pull two, and then read from the book. Okay, here we go. Feathers, restoration. It's beautiful. I felt a cold draft just now. There's two. I knew there was two. Upper world, future, and lodge, council. So let's pull from, like, let's take out the book and read. Let's see what these are. It's a new deck, and I wouldn't be able to do it justice right yet. I'm not quite there yet. But the, I was told to use these cards for this reading. Two new decks to use for this reading. Feathers have fallen on your path. This card comes to you as a spirit teacher or guide as a message from nature. Feathers ask you to be gentle with yourself right now. You have recently endured a rough ride or, and are still a little ruffled. However, Feathers brings assurance that you have or will soon land softly allow yourself to rest amongst comforting plumage while feathers gently strokes away any doubts and worries you have collected along the way a softer approach is needed don't be so hard on yourself or others a period of rest restoration and rebirth you will soon be soaring high see a situation from a bird's eye perspective falling feathers bring the confirmation you've been waiting for that's beautiful. Let's go to the upper world, which is future. Every time I would see a feather before I started like really researching them, I would always feel like I was on the right path. Upper world welcomes you to the ethereal realm of spirits, the dwelling place of the star nations, gods, goddesses, and spirit guides of what you can become. Upper world bends its branch for you to climb onto and up through the world tree. Here you will obtain philosophical advice and guidance from sentient spirits who are waiting to assist you cement a much more positive outcome. Turn to upper world for spiritual guidance that is of a higher vibration than that of the lower world. A spiritual experience will change your view and outlook, see the bigger picture, honor your feelings. Give sympathy where it is needed. Lessons to be learned here. You are a natural healer. Time to realize and embrace your life purpose. Make a commitment. Absolutely. And then you got Lodge. Council. There are times to go it alone. And there are times when the experience and help of others should be sought before taking the next step. Lodge is calling you to do just that. Seek counsel. You may struggle to decide who to speak with. Don't worry that one person or the other would offer better advice. Ask as many people as you wish. Different perspectives can help you to see something that hadn't occurred to you before. Good news is on the way. Someone is holding back from you. Release your fears of being judged by others. Your silence does not defend you. Be brave and speak your truth. Don't worry about the reactions of others. Integrity is key. Only accept what feels right for you. Wow. Both. Okay. Two of the three cards talk about coming up higher. Seeing it from a different perspective. Know that you're on the right path. And then the other talks about really... Um, being a counsel for others, but seeking counsel, confirmation, um, asking those that you respect as spiritual leaders, reach out to them, ask for their advice. 
So let's pull tarot. Okay, Sagittarius. Your general relationship read here. What is going on? Now this relationship read can pick up friends, family, co-workers even, job, place. And it can pick up romantic love, can pick up the past, future, energy is fluid. And it could even pick up your relationship with yourself. Look at the Libra read. That was eye-opening for me. I was just being obedient today and started this group of reads this way. Okay, so one more shuffle. There we go. All right. Nine of Pentacles, Sagittarius. Good job. Six of Cups. Ah, someone from your past. Justice. Page of Wands, Two of Wands. Uh, okay. Queen of Swords, Queen of Wands. They have come out together in two different readings now. Two readings. This is, Leo's was two different energies with these. This is the same energy. This is your energy. King of Cups, Seven of Wands. I did shuffle these. Ten of Wands. I'm telling you, I did shuffle. I did. Mm. So, okay, Sagittarius. Nine of Pentacles. This is working and getting to the point where you could take like a little break. Like a mini vacation type of thing. Like some of us can't exactly go on an actual vacation. So many vacations, a nap on the couch. Put your feet up. Because this is what's coming in. Ugh. If anyone has seen JD, JDS Tarot, you have to look him up. Because he did a video today that was like, I think it was today or yesterday. That was like, what is it with all these people from the past coming up? Where's the new person without all the baggage? Exactly. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. Here comes the past person. Justice. And see, it's funny too because they wait until you've done all this work and then they pop up. So it's someone from your past. Six of Cups is stepping out from Five of Cups energy is in the past. That's nostalgic. That's stepping into the past, answering your own questions. You step from the Five of Cups energy until now and you're bringing somebody with you. That's what Six of Cups is. Then you got... Um, justice, which is Libra energy. This is um, balancing the scales of justice here. This could have been a connection that you had in the past that was attempting to bloom and was stopped. And the Nine of Pentacles could be your spiritual work and doing work on yourself. That would show up in Eight of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles is really working and taking a break. But when Justice card shows up after the Six of Cups, it just kind of makes me... It kind of leads me to believe that this is somebody from your past where it almost started and then something stopped it. Like, circumstances of life stopped it. Maybe it was wrong timing. You guys had timing off. And you go from there to Page of Wands and Two of Wands. Okay, so Page of Wands, text messages. This is social media messages, text messages. Pages are messengers, wands are words. So this is conversation starting. And it starts out here and ends up here. Two of Wands is meeting of the minds. This is two equally matched people that feed one another. Feed one another mentally. And I keep using this um, same example. And I absolutely adore this book. And I adore the series. And I have to finish reading the entire series. And I am that person that has to reread the series. To read the new books in it. So I have to reread the whole thing. Um, the Mary Russell Sherlock Holmes series by Laurie King. It always reminds me of Two of Wands. Because it's a meeting of the minds. By the time Mary Russell meets Sherlock Holmes. He's retired. Um, living in the Sussex Downs, I believe. And um, she nearly trips on him, taking a walk, trips over him. So there's this whole exchange there where um, they have lunch together at his house. 
and he's bored because no one else stimulates him mentally. No one can keep up and feed his mind until he meets her. This is what the Two of Wands is. It's that energy of mentally feeding one another. It's um, like word, word play. I'll, I'll give an example, real life example. My late husband and I, you see, oh God. this is what we would do all the time in conversation. Like we would go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We used to confuse everyone listening to us. And at one point he wanted to open up a tattoo shop. He doesn't tattoo. I was the one that opened it up. My name was on everything. And this was many, many years ago. So um, he was like managing and it was given opportunity for a couple of tattoo artists. It was, um, you know, a place for them to tattoo. Anyway, um, so he was trying to get me to give him the money to start it. And our youngest son had received his, um, this is when he was first disabled and he received lump sum from Social Security. And <laughs> We're outside and the first thing he said was, um, I've had a talk to our youngest son and he wants to invest in his father's dream of having a company. And I said, as his business manager, I will decline that offer because I have also discussed it with him. Now, our youngest son was two. This combative little play conversation went into like legal terms. <laughs> it stretched on for an hour. I had like people walking away going that were like friends sitting there going, I have no idea what this is about and like left. I'm going home. I'm confused now. But it went into legal terms. He kept going on and on. That's the Two of Wands energy is being able to match the other person in the conversation and keep it going you're feeding one another's mind so it starts out as a text message and ends up with this then you go to queen of swords and queen of wands now this is the thing okay queen of wands and queen of swords queen of swords is uh standing in your own power queen of wands is speaking your authentic truth that's sagittarian energy queen of wands now, you're in this mode of the standing in your own power, speaking your truth, and standing strong in what you know and what you're doing. And then this energy is the energy of connection here. King of Cups. So you've connected with someone. There's feeding of minds here. There's equal give and take, both sides. King of Cups, though, doesn't come out with how they feel. They're just kind of reserved in the feelings. So, I don't think you really trust them. Like, there's a connection here. And there's this meeting of the mind's mental connection. But at the same time, okay, them being reserved has put you on this... Not defensive mode, but offensive mode before it gets to the defensive thing. Because what you have here after the King of Cups is Seven of Wands and Ten of Wands. Seven of Wands clearing the decks. This is drawing the line in the sand. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't know what you want. I don't know what you're after. This is a line in the sand. You're going to come out with it or not. Then having to go over each individual piece of conversation with them because I think this whole connection thing just threw you off and confused the hell out of you. So you're going through all of this and it's become like a catalog of it to where it's in your backpack and it's become a burden. Put it down. Just put it down. You're not going to figure out anything if you keep carrying it around. You're not. Four of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, Ace of Swords, and Five of Wands. You see where I'm going with this. Now look, Four of Pentacles is not telling everything. 
And I feel like you're not telling anyone about this. You're trying to figure it out on your own because you feel like you're being tested. Then you got Ten of Pentacles, which is this is long term security. So you're financially stable. You're good. You're good. And this is long term. You're making plans to keep this going. Um, really making investments. King of Wands, though, or Knight of Wands. Knight of Wands shows up. Oh, there's that energy again. The fire knight that shows up saying just the right things. Just the right things. At the right moment. Then you got Ace of Swords, which is truth and clarity behind. And it's the King of Cups energy. So it's truth and clarity behind what's really going on and what's happening. And it's going to cause this. Five of Wands. Five of Wands very confrontational. This is being combative. And I don't even think... I don't even feel like you're being combative. I just feel like it's like... You get to the point where... What do you want? And that's where the combativeness comes in. Like, why didn't you say this? Why just come out with this? What is going on? So there's kind of this mystery here that's going to put you a little bit on edge. Three of Wands... Ten of Swords, Six of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, Seven of Swords. I can't even leave it like that. Nine of Swords, the Empress. Oh, I'll get to that in a second. Oh my God. Okay, listen. Three of Wands. This is waiting for news. Waiting for incoming messages. Waiting for some kind of news. Then you got Ten of Swords. Now, this is the thing. Is that... You're waiting for... Okay, you're going to get truth and clarity over what's happening here. You really are. It's going to put you... And it has put you a kind of little bit combative energy. Because it's one of those things of... Why can't you just tell me everything? That... And it's funny because... I'll, I, have, I have said multiple videos that my late husband is now my guide... The funny part is, is that when he was alive, he would talk shorthand, assuming I would fill in the blanks. So now he's on the other side of the veil as spirit guide. So it's been a training period for both of us because at the same time, it's like, you have to tell me everything. Well, I can't tell you everything. You have to be specific. Don't use code. Like, talk to me. This is the energy of this with the compativeness. Is like, just tell me. Some of us are hard-headed. So, as Sagittarian, like, I get this. We're hard-headed. You have to sit down and specifically write it out black and white. This is what is happening. That type of thing. That's where the combativeness is coming in. Now, waiting for messages. Three of Wands is waiting for a phone call. It's waiting for news. It's waiting. Ten of Swords energy is past energy. And this is almost like one of those things of waiting for good news to come in, but at the same time, telling yourself, is it going to come in? It hasn't happened before. Is it going to happen now? So it's like this worry around it. At the same time, you got Six of Pentacles, which is connecting to your social circle. Whatever you're waiting on, this could connect you to the social circle that you that needs you and that you need so it i feel like it's opening up a whole new social circle to you but you're thinking about the past where it's like been this failure and i got my hopes raised for no reason that's the energy that you're carrying knight of cups is that love offer coming in seven of swords thief and you see this? This love offer was coming in. The crows are facing the same direction. And it was almost like the thief stole it this way. So the love offer wanted to come in. The thief kind of took off with it. So there was an opportunity that was missed here before. I couldn't leave it like that. So nine of swords. This is in your head. Sleepless nights. This is trying to figure out the mystery behind this. Really grieving the past. 
kicking yourself in the ass maybe for missed opportunity that went stolen away. Then you got the Empress creating a new future for yourself. Mother of the Tarot, Mother in yourself. This is growth from the Nine of Swords to the Empress. This is standing in who you are, who you were meant to be. That wasn't a missed opportunity. It was wrong timing. When the Upper World card was pulled, and it talks about future, sometimes we get an image of the future that's not immediate. Years down the road, a couple years down the road, a couple months down the road. So it's not immediate. Those of us that have spiritual sight have learned to, through wisdom and time and nurturing that gift, have realized that when I see it, it doesn't mean it happens tomorrow. We still have to remind ourselves and temper that because the vision will show up but you have to reach the vision. Going from the Nine of Swords to the Empress is a far travel down the road towards reaching the vision. Then this shows up. Lovers. Choice card. Lovers card is Divine Partnership. King of Cups, I think, in that Two of Wands connection, showed up early. I think that was a, an energy of showing up and like catalyst of movement forward. Three off the bottom. High Priestess, yeah. Hangman. <laughs> Can't leave her with the tower. Come on, Wheel of Fortune. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Look. I know, I pulled extra cards here, 22, I'm just checking the time. High Priestess, the one with the vision, connecting to your higher self, connecting to your future steps, getting a vision of where you're ending up. Hangman though, stuck energy. So you get a vision and you're just stuck in the one place not knowing what to do. Now, you see this? Tower. <coughs> Tower isn't bad, it's not. Tower is here to blow up the stuck energy. That's the reason this connection was made. That's what that is. Where it leads, then, after the tower, wheel of fortune card. Luck, uh, karmic wheel, turning back around, in divine timing coming to you. So you saw the vision ahead of time. You were trying to race after it. It has to go around. There's a process here and it has to reach that timing, divine timing. So let's take a couple Green Witch Oracle cards. Cleansing, 25, lemon. Two and five is seven, number of creation. Yeah, cleanse. Cleansing, because you're carrying this past, like, disappointments with you and, like, past mistakes and everything. Don't do that. Cleanse it out of your energy space. You got something really good trying to come in here. Number 38 card, three and eight is 11, angelic number. And this is card of hope. This is daffodil. All right, so let's take two of the White Light Oracle cards by Elena Fairchild, also another new deck. And every time I see that Hope card, I always, something my late husband told me, just part of my mantra, um, when I feel that all hope is lost, hope doesn't get lost, she has a GPS to everyone and everywhere. Because hope is an angel. 
So, that's two cards here. Spirit Bear of 396 hertz. <laughs> uh, let's say I'm laughing for a personal reason. 15 card, 5 and 1 is 6. It's being connected, staying connected. I'm going to read it from the book. One off the bottom. Alabaster Tablet of Layla, 42. Yeah, I cannot do this deck justice. I have to read from the book. You see how much time I have? I have time. Okay. It, the cards just kind of whited out the time here. 15. Spirit Bear of 396 Hertz. And if you see where it says the um, frequency there, you can look up YouTube channel. There's several YouTube videos with that frequency and it you can play the music in the background when you're sleeping it's very healing frequency you are being healed from guilt and fear such emotions will no longer steal your personal power or dissuade you from confidence happiness and realizing your own worth no matter how unlikely it may seem you are going to emerge from a spiritual winter into light and life the divinely ordained time for your liberation healing and emergence much closer than you realize. Abundant blessings are stirring and shall soon man manifest. So let's go to Alabaster Tablet of Layla, 41. Beautiful deck, by the way. All of these are. You are remembering at a soul level. You are tapping into greater awareness and an understanding of your highest life purpose shall become even clearer to you. This may evoke unsettling change within you, but that change is necessary for a new way to manifest. You are protected and guided at all times, especially when you feel uncertain about your course. You are truly loved. I want to read the next line because that one just caught my, caught my attention. The angel Layla... Heralds from Talmudic scriptures, unlike any other angel, she is specifically described as a feminine being. Layla is reminded that there is a place only the feminine can fill. If we attempt to live our lives skewed toward the masculine, we will miss out. This is a great. There is a great value in masculine tendencies toward explanation, exploration, adventure, progress, and development. However, the feminine tendencies toward compassion, acceptance, kindness, and mercy are a balancing necessities. Absolutely. How beautiful is that? I told you I could not do this deck justice. And we're going to take two from the Vintage Wisdom Oracle deck. Purity. Beautiful. Absolutely. Over here by cleansing. And sanctuary. <sighs> oh, purify your sanctuary. We are sanctuaries to our spirits. We are home to our spirits. So. For the collective sign of Sagittarius, this is your general relationship read. Love and light. 